In this video, we're going to be talking about one question. Should you learn NLP going into 2024? And I'm going to save you a little bit of time. The answer is absolutely yes. But the main reason why you're here, and this is why you should stick around to the end, is because that's not actually the question that you care about. The big question, the one that you really care about, is why? should you learn NLP in 2024? And that's gonna be what we address in this video. Now, let's first talk about why I'm making this video. I'm making it because I've gotten asked this question a lot over the course of 2023, and I think it's very useful to maybe talk about why a lot of my subscribers and people on Twitter and people in person are asking me this question. And it stems largely from the advances in AI, specifically around NLP, over the course of 2023. At the end of 2022, we saw ChatGPT come to the forefront. And ChatGPT was fantastic because it brought a nice user interface that allowed for individuals who couldn't code to interact with large language models, things that have been around for a couple of years by that point. But ChatGPT did another thing. It really allowed for the broader use of this and the broader applicability of large language models. And by that I mean people started to wonder if there was really a need to train a local model at all anymore. Now, as 2022 kind of progressed and 2023 came around, we started to see these models get even better. And this question became more and more important. And it really stemmed around GPT-4s and its capabilities with doing various NLP tasks, things like named entity recognition, things like text classification, things like natural language translation, which is where we take uh, maybe something from English and translate it into medieval Latin or vice versa. Over the course of 2023, we saw models get a lot better at these tasks. And so naturally, people wanted to know, should you learn NLP anymore? Is it is it useful in any way? And the answer is yes, it is. And over the course of the next few minutes, we're gonna figure out why that's the case. So on the surface, these large language models might seem like they do a great job, but they really have a couple major deficiencies that make them unreliable and not necessarily useful for production environments. And let's talk about a couple of these. So first of all, large language models are very large, as the name suggests. And if you want to use the state-of-the-art language models, the ones that are going to perform these tasks best, they are going to sit behind paid services. Things like OpenAI's ChatGPT, or if you want to pay by the use, something like the OpenAI's API, where you can call up these same models and do more custom things with them. So let's talk about this real fast. The size of the model dictates a couple different things. Uh, the main thing it's going to dictate is the cost it is to do a certain task. To do a thing like text classification on 4,000 tokens might take a number of dollars, but to do that on 16,000 tokens or 32,000 tokens is going to cost a lot more. And the reason for this is because behind the scenes, these large language models, as they can process larger and larger amounts of data, require more and more compute or computational resources. This translates directly not only to hardware costs or the hardware needed to host these models and use them, but it also translates to electricity. The cost to run these language models is immense. It requires a great deal of electricity, not only to train, but also to actually run. And this means that in a lot of scenarios, to use the best model available to you might be cost prohibitive, or it might not make actual sense when you start to think about how many times a workflow might need to be used in production, or when it's kind of set up and meant to run in the wild. The other thing that these large language models suffer from, and this is a big one, and that's going to be consistency. Now, when you load up a text and you ask a large language model or you engineer a prompt to do a certain task, like let's just say text classification or named entity recognition, and I have a video on this channel that goes through that using a GPT builder, on the surface, the outputs look really, really good and very encouraging. It's not until you start to experiment a little further and maybe give it four, five, six, seven, ten more examples that you start to see some problems emerge. And the biggest problem that you see emerge is consistency. Things that were annotated very well in one document might not be annotated very well in another one. And you might start to see it degrade over time as you try to engage in maybe a chat scenario. 
Now, there's a lot of different things happening behind the scenes that explain all these things, but the big takeaway is that consistency in these large language models is very difficult to achieve and to achieve well. And prompt engineering can only get you so far, and few shot learning, also have a video on that, can also only get you so far in solving this problem. This problem is exacerbated, however, if you're working with very domain-specific data or data from a very particular set of documents or a very particular uh, kind of subfield that might not be well represented in a large language model or might be challenging for it to do certain tasks in. This is also exacerbated even more if the things that you're trying to get the large language model to do consistently are very nuanced or very difficult maybe for you as a human to actually do. Expecting consistency from these large language models as these problems get more complex uh, really shouldn't happen. You should expect, more likely, for them to fail in these areas, or at least not be that consistent. Now, all of these problems can be remedied, however, if you work with well-annotated, that is, consistently annotated, training data, and then train a smaller model to do that same task. Smaller models are oftentimes more accurate than large language models on doing these very specific tasks. And they're oftentimes, actually absolutely are, much more cheap to run. So they're cheaper and more effective to run, and they're also gonna be a lot faster. So if speed is a concern for you, then absolutely these other solutions are probably more appropriate for things like text classification or named entity recognition. Now, the big question though is, should I use large language models at all? It sounds like I shouldn't. The answer is of course not. You should use the best of both worlds. Large language models are really good at being leveraged, especially early on in a project, when you're trying to get a sense of the data or you're trying to help start annotating data. Oftentimes when you start a project, there is not going to be a model available to you that will do the task that you need. These large language models can be loaded up in an annotation environment, such as Prodigy, which comes from Explosion AI, the same people who give us Spacey. There's a recipe to load up a large language model, something like from OpenAI, so GPT 3.5 or 4, and you can use what the language model is good at, at annotating, and consistency isn't an issue, because as it annotates data for you, you can make corrections. And this is really useful early in a project when you don't have a model trained yet. After you get about maybe 500 or 1,000 annotations, though, it's time to train your first model. And once you've trained your first model, it might not be perfect. It's not going to be your, your final production-ready model, but it is going to be good enough to maybe start using that instead of something like GPT to assist in the annotation process. It'll be cheaper and possibly even more accurate and probably more consistent. So this is the way I've thought about how to answer this question, and hopefully this video gives you a good sense about the strengths and weaknesses of large language models and really the utility of still learning NLP in 2024. NLP is the backbone of large language models, and it's going to provide you the skill set for doing all the necessary things like training your own models or knowing what solutions to employ for certain problems. All of this requires a background and understanding of what NLP has to offer. As you go into 2024 and you want to start learning about NLP, check out this channel. I have about 200 videos on a lot of different NLP topics, including how to get up and running with it with very little or almost no programming knowledge whatsoever with the Spacey Library. And you can check that out in this link right up here. If you like this video, like and subscribe. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via something like YouTube memberships, which is linked down below, or maybe give us super thanks or consider supporting it over on Patreon. Thank you so much and have a great day and hopefully everyone has a great start to their new year.